The pandemic in India has taken a huge toll on human lives, but it's also placed a massive burden on people's finances. In the scramble for medical care during India's devastating second wave of infections, many people could only find beds in private hospitals, and for some, that's where the financial trauma began. Kavaljeet Singh no longer sleeps well. He says he frequently thinks about his wife, Mankirat, who he lost during India's deadly second wave of COVID-19. The entire family was infected, but Mankirat's health soon worsened and she was admitted to a private hospital. Singh says the first shock of losing his wife was bad enough. The second was the hefty bill the hospital handed him. For a salaried middle-class family in India, a bill of uh, 22,000 euro is terrifying. And uh, I must say that both emotionally as well as financially, we were not prepared to deal with these shocks. Singh's is one of many cases of overinflated billing by private hospitals during the pandemic. Reports suggest that many people went bankrupt while trying to pay for medical treatment required due to post-COVID complications and long hospital stays. Some of them ended up turning to online crowdfunding platforms such as Keto. In this current ongoing pandemic, the way crowdfunding platforms have come together and they've helped is primarily for very expensive medical treatment where hospital stays are really long uh, and of course where people's insurance have run out, insurance cover has run out. Uh, that's where, you know, crowdfunding platforms have come and created real value and helped a lot of patients. This man, who does not wish to be named, resorted to crowdfunding for the treatment of his sister. This after he had exhausted all his family's savings and borrowed money from friends and relatives. She has been in intensive care at a private hospital for two months with severe post-COVID complications. Her bills have already exceeded 50,000 euros. When we got my sister admitted, we were told that the government has ordered a price cap on COVID treatment costs in private hospitals. But when we spoke to the hospital, they told us that the capping is only for patients who are COVID positive. But the fact of the matter is, the expense of treatment for post-COVID complications after the patient has tested negative is 10 times higher. Kavaljeet Singh says crowdfunding cannot be a long-term solution. He says the government needs to enforce existing rules like capping the price of COVID treatment costs. Since his wife passed away, Singh, an academic all his life, is now raising awareness about these issues within the healthcare sector. See, as a private citizen, I can talk to media, I can write an open article in the media, I can protest, I can write complaint letters to the government, but I can't regulate and supervise private hospitals. That responsibility is not with me. That responsibility lies with the government. Singh says he misses his wife terribly. And while nothing will bring her back, he wants to do everything he can to prevent others from going through what his family did. With more, let's bring in DW correspondent Manira Chaudhry in Delhi. Manira, give us an idea of the scope of this problem in India. How much of a burden has the pandemic placed on people there financially? Well, especially during and after the second wave, we saw multiple reports coming in of families not being able to afford medical treatment. When one of their family members got infected with the coronavirus, there were multiple reports of families resorting to selling assets, mortgaging properties, taking loans, borrowing from friends and families. Also, because we must remember at that time, at the peak of during the, peak of the second wave, it's not like people had a lot of options because reportedly there was a huge crisis of hospital beds. So people had to resort to going to the first option they could get, and that did lead to many families going into severe debt. Now, we heard in your report about one family facing a COVID-related medical bill of 22,000 euros. Give us an idea of how long it would take an average Indian household to pay that back. Well, assuming, I'm assuming we're talking here about an average Indian middle-class family. So we must remember that, uh, that that's a large population here and also with one earning member. And we must also note that for that one average Indian middle-class family, 22,000 euros, their annual income is much less than that figure. In fact, for a majority of them, their annual income is even less than the amount of 22,000 euros. So definitely for families like this, uh, the amount like 22,000 euros is much beyond their capacity. 
Your report also mentions a cap on fees for treating COVID patients, but that apparently doesn't apply to people who are recovering from the disease. Are hospitals exploiting loopholes in government regulations? Yes, there have been uh, people who have been saying this, especially you see in my report also, this one person who's getting his sister treated has had this experience with the hospital who told them that, you know, that gap does not apply to patients who have tested negative now and are facing post-COVID complications. But otherwise, too, there have been multiple reports for the past few months of hospitals not following the regulations and uh, regularly flouting the regulations that the government is placing on them. What efforts are being made, Manira, to protect patients and their families from financial ruin in this situation? Well, at the moment, if you listen to the critics and to the activists, a lot can be done. And if you listen to Kabaljeet Singh, who you just saw in my report, he's also trying to raise awareness. In one of the articles, he writes that the government should definitely try to more strictly enforce these regulations like that of price capping also come up with a quick and better complaint resolving mechanism and also an audit committee which could regularly go to these private hospitals to ensure that they are not over inflating the bills. Manera, thank you very much. That was DW correspondent Manera Chaudhary in Delhi.